All right, now we've uh, gotten a review on the scales and the primers. We're gonna add something new this week and we're gonna want you to, some of you have already looked at us, the five chord forms and the exercise that goes along with that, uh, the strumming exercise. So I'm gonna go at 70 beats a minute, which is where we want you to be. You strike the chord once, you let it ring for three beats on the fourth beat, you move to the next chord. Your first chord will always be in open position. There's five variations of this exercise. We're gonna go through all five variations this, today. So at 70 beats a minute, it should go like this. One, two, ready, strum. Two, three, next chord, D shape. Two, three, next chord is C shape. Two, notice I'm where I'm barring. A shape. Two, three, G shape. Two, sounds like I got all the notes. That's pretty good. Two, three, and that's what you want to do. Let them ring for full three beats. We'll do it. I'll stop right there and to explain to you, if you continue this exercise as it tells you in the book, you'll go up to the next fret, which would be the first fret, and you'll bar and you'll take E out of its open position. So let's try that at 70 beats a minute. So here we go. One, two, ready, play. Next chord shape is a D shape. Yeah, we're barring all of these now. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. All right, we clear up there to the 13th fret. Here we go. I need a guitar with a cutaway to do this. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two. Next exercise up a half step. Same thing. Two, three. Now we're actually in the key of F sharp. We were in the key of E when we started. We're up two half steps from there. There's 14th fret. Well, it's hard to reach. Might be tougher. People with classical guitars, they won't be able to reach that. So you gotta make adjustments. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Now the next chord would be G with any shape. So we'll stop there. What we'll do is we'll go to G in its open position. That's why we don't go too far past the 12th fret up here to finish all five forms. So that's the 12 repetitions version of the exercise. Now I'm going to give you the five variations where we always start in each, in each open position and play the five shapes in, in their relative positions. If you do the 12 reps exercise, you get up to where you can do it uh, much faster than what I was doing it, say up around 120 beats a minute, and uh, you're able to do that, uh, say five or 10 reps a day, you should be strong enough to go ahead and try all the variations of the reps starting in open position. So that's kind of what you have to decide for yourself and in your evaluation, we can let you know when it's time for you to make that transition through this strumming exercise. So we'll go back to 100, uh, I'm sorry, uh, we'll go back to 70 beats a minute, uh, and we'll start in open position with the E form, and I'll show you all five shapes now. So here's 70 beats a minute. Starting with E in the open position, all of these chords will be E chords with different forms. Two, three, play. E is an E form. Two, three. E as a D form. Two, I was a little late. <laughs> okay, E is a C form. Two, three. E is an A form. And E is a G form. If I went all the way up to the 12th fret, it'd be E is an E form again. So we just go back down. E is an A form. Two, three, four. E is a C form again. E is a D form. Two, three, four. Now go to A. Three. A in its open position. A is a G form. Stop a little early. A is an E form. A as a D form. A as a C form. That's all five. Back down to A as a D form. So we get an idea where our hand belongs and how to play through any key and use the same shapes. They're always connected this way. Always spelling the word caged, starting from some letter within that loop of those letter names. D form in its open position. D as a C form. Two, three. D as an A form. Again, it's real easy. Connects to G form. Connects to E form. 
We go back down, back to G form, back to A form, back to C form, back to D form in open position. All right, now G form in open position. G form as an E form. <laughs> there we go. Or G as an E form. And here's a D form G chord. And so on. There's C shape again. Here's A shape. Gonna go back down through C shape. Two, three, D shape. Two, three, four, E shape. And G in its open position. Now this is real easy. Start with C in open position. C to A to G. Hard reach to E. D shape. Remember after, after all five forms, they just repeat themselves. They just go up and down the neck. If you had an infinitely long neck, this would repeat forever. So the point being, when you get done with this, okay, now you know all the different variances of the five chord forms and where your hand belongs. Uh, next week we will add the scale shapes to those chord forms, that's called a spelling bee exercise. So whenever you're playing a chord, like say a C form chord in the key of E flat. You play a little melody with that chord. Or if you're playing, say an altered uh, C shape, you, to make that an E flat seven, or a nine. So you got some ideas for melody lines that are within the chord and scale shape together. Right here. So those are things to think about. Where those chord shapes fit together is very important for access to the neck. So practice those this week. The bar chord's are gonna be tough. Read your bar chord lecture in your book. Uh, go locate that uh, for the people that are taken for a grade. Do that, guys that aren't. Read the, read the lectures anyway. They're good for you. They'll help you uh, get your hand in the right spot. Remember uh, all I've said about not squeezing too hard and uh, not cramping yourself up. So we'll see you uh, next week.